Hi guys, welcome back to Geeks 40k channel and welcome to our latest 40k battle report. Um, in a slightly special location, we are using one of SN Battle Report's beautiful tables here in Gibraltar while we're over for the No Retreat tournament. We're trying to get a sneaky little battle report filmed. So today we have Iron Hands versus Tau in tactical escalation maelstrom mission so the objective markers are already down these are down for the tournament so we have number four here in the middle of the ruined building number six slightly in the open in the back quarter of the battlefield number one and number two right in the center of the city in the plinth memorials to the space marines and then finally number three and number five are hidden in the depths of the forest on the outskirts of this wasted land. HQ for today we have a Tau Commander. He is equipped with a Radiant Suit and Double Fusion Blaster. He has Target Lock and a Shield Generator. He will be accompanied by two Battle Suits and they both have Melters. Over to Troops we have a squad of Fire Warriors. They will be uh, arriving on the battlefield in a Devil Fish which is equipped with Dispersion Pod and Smart Missile Systems. We have a second HQ choice of the Ethereal. He will be joined by the second troop choice uh, of another Fire Warrior squad and they will be in the second Devil Fish. This Devil Fish is equipped with the same loadout as the first one. And then third and final troop choice, we have another Fire Warrior squad and these guys will be foot slogging. Fast attack, we have the Remora drone with uh, burst cannons and seeker missiles. And then second elite choice, we have the beautiful Wyvara Riptide equipped with early warning override and stimulant injector. Over to Elite we have a normal Riptide equipped with iron accelerator and smart missiles. He has early warning override and stim injectors as well. Uh, next we have a crisis suit squad, three of them down here, all with double missile pods. And then we have another crisis suit, uh, three man in this squad as well. And these guys are equipped with fusion blasters and plasma rifles. And then finally, over to heavy support. We have the broadside. This guy is equipped with smart missiles, high yield missiles, and two missile drones. So in this list today, we have the formation retaliation cadre. So beautiful, beautiful Tau army taking to the field today against Robin's Iron Hands. HQ for the Iron Hands today. We have a captain. He is equipped in Cataphractic Terminator armor and lightning claws. He will be accompanied by a squad of Cataphractic Terminators. Uh, three of these guys are equipped with chain fists and two have power fists. And one guy has a melter. They will be arriving in the, on the battlefield in their trusted Storm Raven. Over to troops. We have three five man tactical squads. Uh, this all equipped with melter. Uh, they will be on the battlefield in three Razorbacks, all with their heavy bolters, zooming across the battlefield, hopefully securing objectives for Robin and scoring him lots of victory points. Over to heavy support, we have uh, a thud gun, or two thud guns, and their crew looking at raining shells down on the dirty towers. They make their way across the board. We have three Grav Centurions. Uh, we also have a level one Psyker who is equipped with uh, prescience. And finally, joining the Iron Hands today, we have an Imperial Knight. So that is Robin's Iron Hands force hoping to crush the Tau. The first of the Razorbacks is on the right hand side of the battlefield, very close to objective five. If Robin manages to pull that out, it's got nice bits of cover from the dense trees and foliage there. Not really much that can see him. Uh, towards the middle of the battlefield and the centre of this ruined city, we have the thud guns. We have the second of the Razorbacks, Grav Centurions and the Librarian for the Iron Hands, all hunkered down in the ruins of the building, looking out on objective two and the ruin of the centre. Uh, on the left-hand side of the battlefield, we've got a bit more punch. We have the Imperial Knight ready to smash his way through the ruins and walk across the board towards the Tau and he will be escorted and supported by the last of the Razorbacks. In reserve for the Iron Hands we have the Storm Raven which is uh, basically carrying along the Terminators ready to drop them into this battle when needed. 
The two devil fish are on the right hand side of the battlefield for the Tau. Full to the brim with their fire warriors and the ethereal. Uh, next we've got to a squad of normal fire warriors looking out across the battlefield through the ruined windows. Nice view of the open ground. They might have an Imperial Knight coming towards them, so that'll be quite interesting. And then finally for the Tau, the Wyvara Riptide. So that is it. There is a bucket load of stuff in reserve for the Tau today. They're going to have to weather the storm of the Iron Hands for one turn, and then hopefully reinforcements will be coming in. The first of the objectives for the Iron Hands is Secure Objective 3, which is all the way on the other side of the battlefield, hidden away in the forest. So the Iron Hands have made their way up the field. The first of the Razorbacks has moved up. The second Razorback has moved up. The Centurions have kind of stumbled their way through the building onto Objective 2. The Knight has obviously gone up, and this Razorback has moved up and round. Um, so we're going to be over to shooting, can the Iron Hands bring the pain of death onto the Tau or are they going to suffer the mass of reinforcements? The Razorback obviously not within range of Objective 3, their objective of this turn. Um, pretty much everything else opened up at the Riptide. No damage done over here. Well, there was one wound, but feel no pain that. Um, because the Centurions stumbled their way through the building, they weren't in range of the Riptide, so they opened up at the Fire Warrior squad hiding away inside the building. But because night, uh, night fighting is in play, it was all saved down here. So there was no damage done whatsoever from the Iron Hands. Quite a poor round of shooting there from the Imperial boys. Uh, it's going to be over to the Tau. Let's see what kind of response these guys can do. Tau's objective for this turn is scour the skies. Being unfortunate as the Iron Hands fire is not on this turn, so that one will have to wait for the arrival of the air cover. The two Devilfish have stayed still. The Fire Warriors have jumped back a little bit. The Riptide has used its jump pack move and has moved pretty much all the way across the battlefield and is now standing on the opposite side of the barbed wire fence to all of the Iron Hands. He is going to uh, overcharge and then lay down lots of fire. The Riptide opened up with his flamer and his guns opening up on the Razorback, removing all of the hull points. Um, the squad inside were unaffected by that, so they have just obviously done emergency disembarkation. But from the Flamer, the Centurions were also hit, killing off two of them. So these guys are really low in numbers now. They have taken their break check and they have passed. The smart missile systems from the Devilfish opened up at the other Razorback, removing two hull points. So it is first blood for the Tau for the Razorback, but no Maelstrom mission scored yet. Jetpack move for the Tau. The Riptide has moved back. He's got a nice juicy target of the other Razorback if he wants it next turn. Second objective for the Iron Hands this turn is Secure Objective 1, which again is on the Tau half of the battlefield. So with all that in mind, Robin has sent the Knight up on its little mission towards Objective 1. The Razorback has sped up through the forest, securing Objective 3. The remains of the Centurion squad and the Liberian have moved round the wrecked Razorback, looking at heading and bolstering up the right-hand flank of the battlefield, and they are being supported by the tactical squad that were, uh, jumped out of the Razorback, but they are being covered from the air by the Storm Raven with the Terminators in. I think, I think I can pretty much guess where the Terminators with the Chain Fists are going to go. Um, everything else has stayed still. The Razorback on this side of the battlefield opened up at the Fire Warriors, managing to kill off two. Well done, Rob. Brilliant, well done. Skills. Yep, skills, really has. Um, the Knight has secured objective one, so that'll be a victory point for Robin. The Razorback down here has secured objective three, so that'll be another victory point for Robin. The rest of the army opening up at the Riptide, causing two wombs. So two fire warriors gone and the Riptide hurt a little bit. Bit of a bloody nose, but that is it 
from the iron hand shooting. Not overly, again, the most successful turn, but he has scored two of his objectives. Brand new objective for the tower this turn, we have Decisive Blow, which is basically scored twice as many objectives as the opponent. The Iron Hands currently have four, so the tower are going to have to push them off because there's no way they're going to get eight. Um, so, the Devilfish have moved around. The guys have stayed inside. They're just surveying the battlefield at the moment, as are the Fire Warriors that are down two guys. They have jumped up onto the balcony, and that has basically allowed them to see the rest of the Tau Force deep strike in. Now, probably some of the luckiest dice rolling I've ever seen. Pretty much everything hit on their deep strike roll, apart from the one squad, which scattered a little bit. Um, everything's on. So the Tau reinforcements have hit this battlefield and they have hit it hard. The Iron Hands are kind of surrounded now. Um, they've got one razor back on the outside of the Ring of Death from the Tau. The Riptide failed its Nova charge. However, this Riptide, as I'm now going to call it, has passed its Nova charge and has gone for the three up in one save in combat. So it's going to be an interesting round of shooting. It's not sure how much the Iron Hands can actually weather this storm. Devilfish opened up at the Razorback, uh, popping it nicely. The guys got out and stepped out on this side of the Razorback wreckage. Unfortunately, they had a Riptide right in front of them, so they were opened up at quite a lot and basically all died horribly, screaming. Flesh is weak as they were pulled down. Um, the remaining fire from the really the tower was these two units here opened up at the Imperial Knight, which blew up. It did take out two tower in the resultant explosion, so kind of a bit of revenge in its own death. Um, and, fi and finally, finally. The other Riptide opened up at the remaining Centurion and the Librarian, killing them off as well. So very, very powerful round of shooting from the Tau there. They really did put a lot of damage in to the Iron Hands. At the end of the Tau turn, the thrust moves. Uh, the Riptide has gone back, taking the objective that is hidden underneath the wreckage of the Razorback. These guys down here have jumped forward a little bit trying to get onto objective two. The other Riptide has jumped back, holding objective five. Um, down here, the one remaining crisis suit has secured objective one, and obviously the Devilfish already secured objective two. So that is decisive blow scored. It's one more victory point for the Tau for controlling twice as many objectives as the Iron Hands. So the new objectives for this turn for the Iron Hands, we have Secure Objective 4. That's kind of buried underneath the Razorback with a Riptide standing on it. So that one is definitely not going to happen. We have Behind Enemy Lines, which is gets something within 12 inches of the enemy's board edge. And we have Ascendancy, which is D3 victory points if you control any three objective markers at the end of your turn. So Robin has made the play for Ascendancy in Behind Enemy Lines. The Thud Guns have stayed still because they are holding Objective 2. The Razorback has zoomed up, scoring objective three, but is also 12 inches from the enemy lines. Tactical squad have got out. I'm sure they'll be laying fire in kind of this general direction. The tactical squad from the Razorback have shuffled forward to the hole in the fence. They will be laying down, supporting fire with the other tactical squad. And then the Storm Raven has dropped off his precious cargo of reinforcements. The Califracti Terminators and the Captain have got out. They are staring at the Riptide in between the trees. They are looking at killing him off, and if they do, they will be on objective five, which will be Robin's three objectives for this turn. The Thud Guns of the Iron Ants had their target clean in sight. Open fire, scattered wildly. Hit the Riptide all the way over here. Now that is quite a good scatter, to be honest. But they managed to do one wound. out have about eight hits, I think it was, that Robin managed to put down on the Riptide. Everything else, concentrated firepower on the broadside that was down here. So the two tactical squads opened up, removing the two drones, leaving the broadside all on his own. The uh, Storm Raven opened up and basically finished the poor guy off. The Terminators down here and the Captain opened up at the other Riptide, doing no damage but I think we're gonna get a little bit of combat. 
cataphractor terminators and the captain made it into combat and to be quite honest they made a complete and utter meal of it the captain and the terminators laid in was it 16 17 hit uh, 17 attacks 17 attacks in total um, they hit six times three wounds done all of them saved for no attacks back um, so it is drawn combat the riptide is going to stand there so the iron hands have managed to tie him up and stop the ap2 flamer from doing any more damage but that is not the result Robin wanted because that is going to stop him scoring Ascendancy. So three new objectives for the tower. We have Kingslayer, which is basically uh, kill the Warlord. Um, we have Concentration of Fire, score a victory point at the end of your turn. If the first enemy unit attacked in the shooting phase is completely destroyed, score D3 points instead if the first two enemy units are de completely destroyed. And D3 plus 3 victory points if three enemy units are completely destroyed. And Application of Force. So just like the Tau like to do, this one is for going into combat. One victory point. If the end of your turn, if two or more units charge a single enemy unit, D3, instead if that enemy unit is completely destroyed at the end of the assault phase. So with all of that in mind, the Devilfish have moved forward and have finally dropped their cargo off. The Fire Warriors and the Ethereal are out. Uh, round here, the Riptide has moved round, the Tower Flyer has also moved round. Really the only other thing was the other Riptide that was in combat down here with the Cataphract Terminators has withdrawn and he has gone into ongoing reserves. Everything of the Tau that could see them opened up at the Thud Guns, killing off the two guys on the ground floor. These guys have also passed their morale check. They took a lot of firepower. They managed to survive a little bit frustrating for the Tau, but they've got to go into assault. The Thud Guns have been the focus of the Tau army in the shooting phase, and they will be in the assault phase as well. The Riptide tried to make it in, but unfortunately failed his charge range. Um, basically, the Tau needed two units to get in, and the crisis suits down here were not in range, so there was no point any Tau trying any more assault moves, so that card is completely pointless and useless for Tau, to be honest. Um, so with the thrust moves, the Warlord and his crosses suits have jumped over the top of the terrain and are now right behind the Thud Guns. And then finally, the last remaining crosses suit from over here has jumped up and landed on the town centre square and has survived his dangerous terrain check as we head over to the Iron Hands turn four. It is not looking good for the Emperor's might. Objectives, we have Assassinate, Kill an Enemy Character. We have Secure Objective 6, Secure Objective 1, and Ascendancy. So, Secure Objective 6 is all the way around here, around the back of the Devilfish at the back of the battlefield. And so is Objective 1. Really important quarter of the board, or half of the board really now for the Iron Hands. They've got a lot of Tau standing in the way. Uh, so with that in mind, Robin has uh, moved his Razorback. It's gone to plough its way through the very thin and flimsy barbed wire fence and has immobilised itself. Brilliant. Considering the Iron Hands are meant to be awesome at stuff like this, they've done very well there, Robin. Well done. This squad has moved up towards the gap in the fence, trying to support their brothers, um, the Cataphract Terminators and the Captain have got back into the Storm Raven, which has moved across the board a little bit. And the other remaining tactical squads have come along trying to support the Thud Guns. Um, I'm not sure how many victory points Robin's going to score this turn. He might be going for Assassinate. We do have the Warlord of the Tau here, right behind the Thud Gun, so maybe they will try and kill him off. So the Iron Hands really had two target priorities this turn. One was the Warlord behind the Thud Guns. He was opened up at by the Tactical Squad. He was also opened up at by the Melters on the front of the Storm Raven. No damage done whatsoever to these guys down here. Um, the Fire Warrior Squad were opened up at by the Thud Guns, killing off seven. One remains, they went to ground. That's why they're lying down. They're not just chilling out. They were opened up at by the heavy bolters from the Razorback. They were saved. 
so many sixes being rolled, it's unbelievable. Uh, the crisis suit on top of the uh, town square was opened up at by the bolters, but no damage done. So in that turn, Robin scores a grand total of zero. Tower objectives this turn, we have secure objective three, secure objective two, uh, concentration of fire, and we have King Slayer. So three and two, two is in front of the thud guns and number three is down here. So in the movement and shooting phase, the Riptide came back onto the board round the back of the uh, Razorback and the uh, Torrent Flamer hit the other squad at killing off three. So two guys remained, which was opened up at by the burst cannon and killed the remaining two guys off. So that was the Razorback gone and the five man tactical squad gone. Uh, over this side of the battlefield, the Riptide and the Crisis, their Warlord, opened up at the five-man tactical squad, killing them off as well. Um, so that was concentration of fire, so that will be D3 plus three victory points. Um, everybody else has kind of moved up, so the Devilfish has moved on to objective four, in case that card comes up. We have got this Devilfish and the Ethereal. Ethereal? Yeah, yeah, I said it right. Uh, 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 just kind of loitering in the middle of the battlefield. These guys having a mini party in the, in the town square because it is pretty much over for the Iron Hands. Now the Iron Hands are winning on victory points, but D3 plus three a, a victory points is quite interesting, but we're gonna do the thrust moves first to see if we can get onto objective two, because that'll be another victory point as well. So the tower thrust moves this turn, the crisis suit have moved down onto objective two, scoring that objective for the tower. Round here, the crisis battle suit has got six inch thrust move back onto objective three. So that's two more victory points, but then we also have D3 plus three. So if you want to roll us a dice, it's a two, so it's four victory points. That's six victory points in total this turn for the tower. Objectives for the Iron Hands this turn, we have a Secure Objective 5 and we also have a Big Game Hunter and then we've still got Assassinate Ascendancy and Secure Objective 1. Now, Secure Objective 5 is a little bit of a shame because the uh, Storm Raven has actually moved away from that because what he's done is come and dropped off the Cataphract Terminators and the Captain. Now, everything has fired at the Tau Warlord trying to kill off this character and unfortunately no damage done. Oh no, Heavy Flamer has caused one win. Sorry, I'm just used to Robin fluffing everything in this game. So we have now got an eight inch charge, which Robin is going to roll on camera. Let's see, can the Terminators make it in? No, they cannot. No, they cannot. So with that, Robin has decided to call it. So the Tau are victorious, nine, three on victory points. The Tau were very, very aggressive in this battle. They came up, they came forward. They really did get into the Iron Hand, some bad dice rolling from Robin there, let him down. Um, but that was good fun to watch. There was some really, really interesting rolls, especially for Tristan with the amount of sixes he was rolling. It was just disgusting. Um, and some bad dice rolling from Robin, which is always nice to see, to be quite honest. Um, so thanks for watching, guys. Please leave some comments. Please leave us a like. It does really help out the channel. And why not subscribe if you haven't done so already? And we will see you on the next one.